Right, so here's another exciting episode. Welcome to the Hollywood Experience podcast with uh, David Bethke. How's everyone doing? Uh, uh, I think they're doing great. I hope I think so. They're it's kind of feeling uh, a lot better these days. One way channels. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's you know, everybody out there is going. Yeah, I'm feeling really good, especially now that I'm outside. You know, um, hopefully we're getting is- outside. Hopefully you're getting fresh air because we need it after these last couple of months. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. I I think you know how people's um, I can put the, the good and the bad has come out in this. Mm-hmm. I actually mentioned this on my other podcast on the Peace Fund Radio podcast a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago, and I said, you know, the interesting thing is, is when you're walking out outside, when we were, when we everybody was wearing masks, mm-hmm. that everybody was looking at each other and nodding and and acknowledging the person yes. walking past them. In LA, that was really hard to do. Mm-hmm. I, I found that really interesting. And I think, you know, hopefully it's going to bring some change yeah. to the way that we react to our friends, our family, people around us. It's bringing, it it's bringing a human connection. Out. It's bringing a new type of human connection, which is something that, you know, something that people can take positively away from all this. You know, every, everyone's aware this is something that's happening to everybody. It's something that we all have a connection to. And it, it's going to do something one way or another to us, you know, when we're finally able to go out and mingle and interact with people all over the place. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, film productions are going to now start going back. Uh, but the protocols in place are extensive. I mean, I've seen several of them because we're working on something currently. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, it, to look at the protocols, you know, for instance, you know, crew can't talk to actors. They have to be six feet away from the people. No right. other people, uh, only essential personnel on set, like a closed set would normally be there. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to wipe down all the equipment, all the cameras, <laughs> yep. all the catering has to be wrapped. I mm-hmm. mean, it is extensive. It's going to put on at least 10 to 15 percent of the budget yeah. just by doing this because it's first of all going to take longer secondly it's going to you're going to have to employ more people in some areas to actually take care of some of these things right so it's it's kind of an interesting process that's going on in the in the world of hollywood yes where you know how you know think about extras right right now extras in movies mm-hmm. it's going to be very hard to have a lot of extras oh yeah Absolutely, because they got to be in group scenes. That's what the that's what the extras' jobs are: is to be grouped up together. You know, whether you're cheering, whether you're just kind of there. Exactly. It's just like you know, you got to be close. I've I've done extra work. I know what it's like. It's exactly that. Like you're sitting next to people in cramped quarters, even offset. Like when you're in the wait, extra waiting room, it's not a huge space, and it's just like you're dealing with a lot of people in a really in really close quarters. Well, it is now. They're, mm-hmm. they, they're, they're having separate rooms. They can only have... The idea was if you did have extras, you can mm-hmm. only have a certain number. Yeah. You had to have an extra Wranglers handler yes. to actually make sure that there's social distancing. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things. There's a lot to it. Really co- yeah, I mean, so we'll have to see how that's going to go. Yes. I'll, be, I'll be curious you know, to see and talk to some uh, people that are going to be going back to some sets. Right, right, right. And see what's, what the, what the, the um, temperature is out there, mm-hmm. what, how people are handling it. Yes, so things uh, are definitely going to change. Well, speaking of Hollywood, who do we have today? Yancy, my buddy Nancy, Uh Yancy Yarius. Yes, and you've worked with him before, haven't you? Yeah, Yancy and I met actually um, years ago Mm -hmm. back uh, in 1998 when I did a film called Dead Men Can't Dance. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, it was an interesting film. uh, The idea was, I think it was when it first started with the the whole female... um, uh, how can we, movement to actually be mm. able to put females were just as strong as men were on yeah. screen and in fight scenes, etc. Because mm-hmm. it was about female rangers, right? And how they were hooking up with you know operatives who were you know clandestine operatives, operatives, mm-hmm. which I was one of them, of course. Uh-huh. Um, of course. You know, um, but Yancy was one of the other crew, and you know, it was uh, we met on that film. It was an interesting thing because all of them. We talk about this, and Yancy will talk about this in the interview. How you know actors will train and train and train to go through things. They mm-hmm. actually took the actors on that film and put them through ranger training ah. for about three weeks, and it was a hopeless exercise because when they came on set, the director, who was the first director, who got fired halfway through, it, and I'll explain why in a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, he basically didn't really take that into consideration. You know, the things that they were doing, the way that they were handling things didn't work for him. So he kind of changed them. And it actually caused an injury to one of the girls. Oh, wow. Um, 
because he wa- he was having a terrible time with the DP. Mm-hmm. He was he was saying things to me and to other people that were untrue, mm-hmm. and was just doing what he wanted to do. Wow. And uh, you know, eventually, an, uh, one of the actresses was carrying a rifle and he wanted her to carry it close. And as she fell to the floor, it hit her in the face and spit her face open. Uh. So I had to take her to Manila Uh uh, to go and have her face stitched up uh, because I was going there anyway. And the producer came to me at one point and at this point we were in the tunnels of Manila. And in in Manila, they had these tunnels which were uh, during the the occupation, the Japanese occupation of Manila in World War II. Mm -hmm. There's about 20 miles of tunnels built underneath Manila that were uh, used for troop uh, movements. And at the end of the war, well, prior to the end of the war, they put all the... um, GIs and all the Filipinos and that into those tunnels yeah. and into pits and basically killed hundreds if not thousands Jeez. of them inside there. And at the end of the war, the Japanese hid in there. Mm-hmm. And for a year afterwards, the Filipino army would sit at each... each. Um, they tried burning them out, first of all. And at each exit, they sat there and waited for them to pop their heads up. And then either, if they didn't surrender, they'd shoot them. Jeez. So this these tunnels had some really weird vibes. And I remember yeah. walking through there... And when I did walk through there, was there was this really funky vibe, mm-hmm. and I, 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 it was dark. I remember there was these uh, long dark tunnels, and off the tunnels were these uh, areas like dark areas, and the tunnels were lit only by fluorescent lights, and mm-hmm. a couple of them were out. So you, I'm kind of walking down there with this. <laughs> I had a knife in my hand. I'm like, yeah. I, I don't know what's going to jump out at me over uh-huh. here. But I remember the producer coming up as I was walking down into the tunnels one day and she said, are you okay? I said, no, not really. Uh-huh. And she said, why? What's the matter? I said, well, yeah. it's not going to solve itself until until you, the, the resolution happens with the director. Because he's... he's, And sure enough, the next day he was fired. <sighs> and it, wasn't, it wasn't because of me. It was just happened to be because this guy was not... You know, listen, I don't care. I, I'm not going to work with him ever again. So uh-huh. uh, I'm, I'm not going to mention who it is. But he was re- he was replaced because of so many issues that happened on a set. So mm-hmm. that's why the safety factors have to be, you know, taken into consideration when yeah. you're doing, uh, you know, uh, fights or anything of, of uh, physical nature mm-hmm. because, you know, we're not doing this for real. Right. If you did this, you know, in a, if you're doing military training and you cut your face or do something, well, that's part of what you signed up for. Mm-hmm. But you're not, for, as an actor, it's a different thing. Right, absolutely. And people have to realize that. So... Actors have to turn around and, and look at things from making it real, but mm-hmm. don't make it too real because you might get hurt. So like we talked about last time, you've got to have a certain amount of control. Make it believable because yeah. that's what your job is. And, you know, that's the job of an actor is just to make it completely believable. But it's also, you know, the job of other people on set to make sure that everything is completely safe. So because, right. you know, you do have practical effects that are happening. You do have, you know, stunt people that are jumping from high distances and from car to car and explosions going on in the background. Those things require safety. And, you know, well, it's the responsibility to, you know, make sure that a set is completely safe. Well, I can tell you a few stories about that. But before we do, I want to get to... Uh, the Yancey interview. Yes. Um, Yancey's just recently been on Queen of the South, and we'll talk about that mm-hmm. when uh, right after this interview. So uh, without further ado, here's uh, Yancey Arias. Hey, hello. I'm talking to Nancy. Uh, Yancey, how are you, Brian? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, Nancy. <laughs> I know. You know, that's, uh, it's been a while since I've been called Nancy, but they used to call me Fancy Yancey from Delancey back when I was a right? kid. Yes, and sometimes they would throw the Nancy just to make fun. It's great. I love. I love it. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of my friends uh, back in the day, uh, you know, they uh, they 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 uh, mistook me for a Nancy, and I'm like, hey, whatever, it's okay. I love it. I'm a Yancy dude. Yancy <laughs> Aries. That's, 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 that's you're from uh, New York, right? Originally. New York, New York, Lower East Side, Flushing Queens. Yep. Lower East yeah, Side, Manhattan, and Flushing Queens. Yeah. There you go. So you know, I'm sure that they got a. Uh, a protocol to uh, you know make calling people names like they do in London too same type of thing you know there's a certain you gotta you gotta you gotta walk the the streets for that type of thing. <laughs> right 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 well you know it's a funny place man it's it's uh you know uh, it, it it has so much history and so much has changed over the years uh, since I you know I go back every year and it's just amazing to see how the layers have changed over the years and it, it, you know and I'm talking I'm 40 eight years old now and you know we're, we're talking a lot of change since uh i grew up there and uh you know uh, it, it's just a whole new place it's a whole new place a whole new flavor so 
Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I think now it's going to change even more. But, you know. yeah, yeah. but listen, let, tell me, tell me, how did you get into acting? Let's, let's start with that. How did I begin with acting? Yeah, how did you become an actor? What, what oh, was your... well, I, I was I was about, well, geez, I mean, if you want to go way back, I, I was eight years old, and by accident, I saw Scarface. And I, <laughs> an eight Scarface. Year old watching, you were eight, and you saw Scarface. I was eight and I saw Scarface. Um, back in the day, there was a place called the RKO Theaters, and it was just yeah. a place where, you know, uh, it was... It was a free fall. Like you just walked in, and you know, you, there was you, they had triple, you know, was it uh, what the triple showings? You know, you can you can buy you can buy one ticket, and you can watch three movies. You know, it was it was amazing in the 1970s. You know, and um, I, I didn't know what Scarface was, and and neither did my aunt at the time, who was a, a, young, a young girl. You know, she she we just and we sat there, and I she didn't think to, to pull me out of there but i i thoroughly enjoyed the movie <laughs> and i said and i said you know i i saw i saw some latino actors on the screen and i was like oh, I, I think i could do that you know, <laughs> you know? and it and started so, a, a, a many year career after that right well well you know but i i didn't think about it much after that but i was intrigued by it and then i saw other actors like um Eastside morales in uh and a, a film called Bad Boys with Sean Penn. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And and then you know I was about twelve years old and and I was curious about the business and and, and my mom you know kind of like uh, she she put me in the right direction and I went to a school that had you know an art program you know sing, a music program and some theater uh, at St John's Prep in Queens uh, where I was living and uh, and then I met a, a great man who became my mentor. Uh, James Green, who's no longer with us, um, he he started my my acting and singing career and uh, introduced me to other mentors like Jack Romano, and um, I studied at Stage Door Manor over the summers, so I would do the plays during the year during the winter season, and in the summers I would do plays uh, at uh, Stage Door Manor under the direction of Jack Romano, and uh, who would, and is no longer with us. There's a lot of people that I've studied with or. Uh, have gone on, and uh, uh, although when I continued my studies in college at Carnegie Mellon, uh, you know, I met some great people there, and, and also teachers uh, that I continue to study with, like Alan Savage in New York, who continues to be a dear friend and a, a brother, and, and also a mentor, and uh, and uh, another woman by name Catlin Adams here in Los Angeles. So I've, over the years, I just kept my studies. I never stopped. You know, when you stop learning, you stop living, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> true. So, the, so the origins come from New York, and and James Green was the spark. <laughs> yeah. So how did how did you? I mean, you've done a, you've done a lot of stuff. I mean, obviously, we chatted the other day. I saw you in Queen of the South, and I thought you were awesome in it. Um, you know, you did a great job. My wife hates you. <laughs> I love it. I don't like him. He's not a really nice guy. I know he's a really nice guy. Because everybody wanted you to die, and everybody got a piece of you at the end. Well, for right. those of right. you who didn't see it. Spoiler alert. I was everybody's filet mignon, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so what, have you, how much action, you, I mean, you, I saw you did some action, and then just some gunfights and that. Have you, what other action stuff? Would you say because you you also did live free or die in L.A. I think it was with uh, Bruce Willis. Bruce and, Willis, yeah, yeah. Well, you and I did a movie called Dead Men Can't Dance. Remember exactly. That? Yeah, <laughs> that was way back in yeah. 1998. I think. 1998. Yeah, 98. Yeah, that's 1998. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> that was a a fair amount of action, not a huge amount, but I mean, again. I know. I remember saying to myself, I wish I had a fight scene with my boy Adrian. My God, man, we, never, we never got to do that. But you and I were kind of on the, on the same side at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were on the same and, side. And, of the and, Mike, and Michael Bean was the bad guy. Of the the bad guy, and I had a fight with Michael, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. By, the, by the fact, that was a really good knife fight. Like, that was really good. You guys were great at that. Yeah. yeah, thanks. I mean, the, the funny thing was it came from um, – uh, Filipino guy there. I, I, I don't know if you remember. He was he was kind of the, the coordinator. Gun fight coordinator, yeah. And, and uh -huh. he was a, he was this old guy who's about sixty five years old who had mm -hmm. no teeth and a pot belly and mm -hmm. could move like lightning. It was you know, and he came up with all these moves, etc. And I remember that. I remember you. I remember just watching you guys rehearse uh, before the scene. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was it was it was 
fun to do, you know. I mean, but you know, yeah. when you when you do these fights, it, it, it becomes different sometimes today than it was before. Today, I think sometimes uh, it becomes very generic the type of fighting that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, it's just about the action and how much bang you can get for the buck. Have you seen totally. that change in, in what you do and and how you are on set? Are the sets different now than back in the nineties, for instance? I find I find I find <laughs> you know I don't you know I. I started doing a lot more fight scenes later on in my career after that particular movie that you and I did, um, but especially when I moved here to Los Angeles. And I've always respected the stunt coordinators and the stunt teams. You know, I've, I've befriended them many times over, and they, um, you know, I, I've worked out with some of, some of the greatest stunt teams in the world. Um, matter of fact, uh, Chad Sahelski, uh was uh, was the stunt was the stunt coordinator on Live Free or Die Hard, and uh, well, no, I'm sorry. He was on the stunt team, and he later became stunt coordinator on other things like Matrix and whatnot. And he, you know, you know him from Neo. Um, he played uh, uh, Neo's stunt double in Matrix, and now he's big time director of the John Wick movies. Anyway, I had the opportunity to work with him at Live Free or Die Hard, and I trained with him a little bit um, at his big hangar that he has out here by the LAX, and. Uh, uh, it's just amazing, um, you know, to see what these guys do. And, you know, uh, with that found respect and that collaboration, I've, anytime I had a chance to work with anyone, uh, you know, my background in the martial arts is, you know, Kung Fu Wushu. Uh, and so I, you know, I, I love the martial arts. So I, I, I love to see, you know, what, what a coordinator brings to the table for any fight scene that I'm in. And then I say, okay, hey, kid, what, would you like to try this as well? And what's comfortable with my body, and they're down with it. So they're very, they're very collaborative now, especially if they know if somebody knows how to, you know, how to move, you know, in, in that in that way. You know. As an actor, how do you how do you translate the fight to what you do as an actor? Because there is a difference between doing the actual fight and then the character that you bring to it. Right. Well, you know, just like anything else, right? It's you, you know, the way that we practice. You know, will show on the day on the on the fight day. So, you know, when when I was told I had a fight scene in in one of the episodes, in particular, like in Queen of the South, I took my fight partner, the other actor, and we he and I trained for at least three weeks that we knew of the fight scene that there was any remnants of it. And he and I, like literally, almost every day, about four days of the week, uh, we had we rehearsed uh, our version of the fight. Then we brought in the, the the coordinator and said, "Here's some ideas we have." Then we rehearsed with the coordinator for a week, and we came up with stuff mutually that was, um, you know, ready. So that way, whatever dialogue he and I had in that scene, it was second nature, and whatever movement we came up with, we had it. You know, like it was a dance. You mm-hmm. know, and and we had the choreography, and it was, it, I mean, we had so much fun with it that literally. Before we said okay, let, you know, when we had to show it to the crew, the whole, you know, the fight before we shot it, we just clowned around and had a pillow fight, <laughs> you know. And in that kind of freedom, because we were so ready to do the fight, you know, we enjoyed that process. And just like anything else, it's like you know, uh, uh, we like I like to say, you know, uh, shooting or fight night or whatever, uh, the actual day that you're on set is a celebration of your preparation, right? Nice way to put it. Yeah. Nice way to put it. I mean, like, any story, any any difficulties you had when you deal with fights, any, any moments that you kind of went, oh God, I wish this moment was better, or the situation was better, or something that that happened that was not planned. Oh yeah, I mean, you look. What do you mean? Like look back, if you have any kind of regrets or anything like that? Well, no, I mean, and you know, it, there are moments sometimes, you know, you go, oh, that fight was always problematic because <clears throat> we couldn't get the timing right, or. I didn't, right. We didn't have there enough preparation time, or there was something like right. instance, when I was on Highlander. Sometimes I would be right. doing the preparation for the next this fight while well, I'm I'll shooting give, the other I, series. Right? Yeah, I give you an example. Like uh, in this particular situation that I'm talking about in the fight scene we had, and I think it was episode six of, of Queen of the South. Um, you know, I wanted to throw in a little bit more. Uh, I, I didn't want to make a big, you know, extravaganza of the fight, and I get it. It's you know, it's we're serving the piece. But the fact that my character is, uh, you know, special forces, right? He's a, he's a, he's a colonel of the special forces, 
And this other guy, the DEA agent with ex, with ex military background, I wanted to see these guys get on the ground too. And I gave them that option, and they ended up not using it. And I was just like, oh, that's because that's what makes it real, you know. Do you, think that, do, you, do you think that's, that's interesting when you talk about making it real? Um, you know, what's the difference between the fights you used to do back in your early days compared to the ones that you do now? Well, you see, like, you know, back in the day, it was just a lot more, you know, punches and, you know, kicks and everything was really wide for the, you know, for the, for the camera so we can really tell. It was very basic back in the day, right? Today, there is an inclination to giving giving fights uh, as authentic as they can be on camera as, as the story allows it. This is where we're at. You know, MMA is a big, you know, look, we all know that Bruce Lee was our first MMA, you know, aficionado, right? But, you know, be, beyond that, like, you know, you have the Gracies who started, you know, the ultimate fighting, you know, uh, um, you know, through the Valley, and then they came up with, with um, what was it, uh, before before uh, UFC, it was um, uh, what was the name? What was the name of it? Well, it was it was an MMA. Uh, there was authority it. Before yeah, there was, the, yeah, there was MMA before it, and then it was and, UFC. And then it was UFC. So they, and you, as you know, the the, the Gracie family put off the brand for you know to UFC for a couple of million dollars, and now I'm sure they're kicking themselves in in, in, in the head for. We're not selling for more because now it's huge in you know, a billion dollar industry. Um, but but uh, but anyway, uh, because of the influence of MMA in our current world and how how uh, it translates to our military and what you know what what uh, I mean the Gracies trained the military the you know the UFC fighters have trained with military you know a lot of different a lot of different influences going on to what's happening now and the way people train. Um, you know that that I feel like the, the the film world is embracing that, especially people like Chad Chahelski, who I mentioned before, uh, and other coordinators like him. You know, they 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 want their fights to be as authentic as possible. Did you, did you get any situation you know that uh, was kind of um, you thought you might be able to do better, or that was went weird or something of that nature in, in, in the stuff you've been doing? Sure, sure. Well, you know there are, you know, there are times when you do the choreography, you, you propose what you'd like to do to the producers, you know, and, and they they watch and they go, oh, that looks exciting, but, you know, can we do it, like, bigger and not so much in close fighting, maybe just something that the camera really, you know, accepts because we, we just want, you know, like, punching and throwing. Okay. And, yeah, and see, like, can I stop, yeah. Yeah, can I stop you? Yeah. I'm getting a lot of background stuff, and that's what happened. It's going to be really hard on a oh. of the kids in the background. Can you go in oh. and put a... a, a Quiet a spot. Sure. Let's try to go to a quiet spot. Okay. Yeah, it's just that it's just that on a, on radio or anything, you're going to hear all this background stuff. I feel you. Since I, we're I, recording it now, I don't want to. Do, I, I don't want to. You know. Let me ask you this because this is the quietest part, but I don't have a great. Yeah, you're gone. You're gone. Hello. How about how about in here? Uh, do you you got me? Yeah, that was what was happening before. Is what's happening now. It was all going okay. in and out of signal. Do you, do you got me here? Yeah, but, yeah, I think so. Start talking. I'll see if I can hear it. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Yeah, it seems to be good there. Seems to be good okay. there. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it right here. Okay. Yeah, see, now, see, now it's doing it again. Do it again. Talk it again. again. Just one minute. Okay, testing. Yeah. One, it, two, three. It's breaking. It's breaking. Okay, hold it's on. breaking. Please. Yeah. Hold on. Let me do something. John Carlos, I need you to lower that for me and don't scream, okay? This is simple. You just do this. Look. That's my son. Hold on a second. Let me make this <laughs> it's all right. I've got him too. He, he's the six year old that's playing Fortnite right now with his cousin. You can hear them, son. Just I just don't want you to scream, okay? Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if this I've got on. a seven year old. It's, it's, it's... Uh, uh. Let me see what happens here. No, don't call his name. Just play. Can you can you hear him in the background? Not now, no. Not now. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try I'm in my closet now. <laughs> All right, let's see if this works. All right, right let's, let's try this again. Okay. All right, I'll just start it again. Okay. Uh, three, two, one.
Was there any situation you got into? I mean, I've been in loads of them, but where you kind of thought, you know, that could have gone better, or I would have liked to have done this in a in a in a fight. There's, you know, I'm I'm sure there's something in all the stuff that you've done. Yeah, like for example, in Queen of the South, we had this pretty fun fight that we did. Uh, rehearsed it for like two weeks, and you know, me and the the other actor. Um, we we worked out some stuff on our own because we both are martial artists. He, he's he's big in taekwondo and karate, and I'm big on kung fu and jujitsu. And you know, the, 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 between the two of us, we're like, oh, let's let's make this like a badass fight because here here we have an opportunity to just go balls out. And then we came up with something fun and really you know close to military kind of Krav Maga kind of Russian, you know. Uh, Russian fighting and martial, you know, all the martial arts, mixed martial arts. We want, we really wanted to co- to come up with something real that two guys from the ex-military background or current military, you know, would be doing if they got into an enclosed situation in the hotel room. Then we introduced it to the fight coordinator, and you know, the reason why we wanted to get together for us was because you know we wanted it, we wanted something that our bodies knew how to flow, right? right. And, and, you know, and and and. Uh, and then let him kind of let the coordinator, you know, shape it and form it and take the best of what we have so it complements, you know, the shots and, and the camera angles. And then he was really happy with what we came up with, and he was excited that he was finally working with some good actors who are good martial artists. And then we tape it, and we shared it with the producers, and the producers were like, oh, that's awesome, but don't go on the ground. Like, you know, don't go on the ground. Like, no, we Make make a little bit more generic, not gen, not so generic, but just more like, you know, big punches, big hits. You know, let let's see more of that. And we're like, mm, that's not how people fight anymore. You know, like that's it's not that's, that's old school. You know, westerns. You know, <laughs> so you know, we were like, all right, let's try to keep as much as we can without. They don't they don't really have the time to try to figure this out. So we're gonna do what we do and do our best with what we have and try to complement, you know, with their needs along with our fight coordinator. And finally, you know, when it came to it, you know, we, we did a rehearsal in front of the whole crew and everybody was all excited. And coincidentally, we just said, you know what, let's mess with the crew. So we, we, we did the entrance, we came in, and right before we started to fight, we just broke out in a pillow fight. <laughs> They're like, that's your choreography? I was like, yeah, yeah, all right, let's do it again. Here we go. It was a good laugh. It was something for the boopers that no one's ever seen. But I actually posted it one, uh, on my Instagram. If you look for it, it's in my Instagram. So anyway, um, we did the fight, and, and and then we had to shave that down a little bit just to make it, you know, uh, um, palpable for, for what the producers were looking for. And so we we, we ended up losing a lot of the grappling you know the throwing to the ground and, and the arm locks and you know um, and we and we basically kept one one not not even guillotine it was like a, a, a one um, a one choke we we were, we were able to close the fight on the choke and and that was it but you know before that um, it was just you know uh, as much as par- we we parried quite a bit but you didn't really get to see like a lot of the other dynamic stuff that we wanted to add to it that was that we thought was going to be able to, you know, uh, and land up in the final cutting room. Uh, but, uh, no, nah. you know, at, at the end of the day, we were fine. Did you ever see, um, you, you talk about the realism in, in, in movies now, because it has changed. It is, you know, the whole, you know, let me sucker punch you and the Western type of stuff has kind of gone south for the new type of style. Did you, have you ever seen Atomic Blonde with uh, Charlize Theron? Yes, yes, I, I saw that, and I saw um, what was this? It was a recent film that I recently saw that was pretty cool. I mean, all the all the the the, the last Born Identity films, like hit the last and the year. Bond film. I'm one of the Bond, Bond. Yeah, the Bond film. He was using a lot of parkour. That was great. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, they they're stepping it up. You know, so I, I, it all depends on on the producers you work with. I think, right? Like, you know, some some people come from certain tastes of life and. You know, maybe they don't watch all the movies we watch, and maybe they don't know all the fighting that we know because that you know they're just thinking about the content in terms of the writing, and the you know the story. So it it happens, you know, and, and you just try to bring what you got, you know, when you have it, you know, and uh, and you do your best with that. Did you do anything in King, Kingpin? No fighting in Kingpin. I wish uh, that was a fun show too, but yeah, my character was not. He was more of a, a uh, you know a cerebral guy. He was very he was very mathematical, very logical in his approach. Mm-hmm. So his fighting was you know with a pen, 
and with co- you know with coordinating and you know and, and business. You know, so he was the business he was the business brain of the of the whole cartel. Uh, and one of the earliest films that uh, or shows that came out shot like a movie. That's why I say films. But um, one of the earliest projects that kind of like introduced the the cartel world to uh the to to all of the industry because after that everybody wanted to be in the business of making cartel shows you know i mean it just came coming like a year to two years later fx came out with a whole season on 24 you know not fx fox a whole season on 24 uh uh dealing with the cartels using the same the same you know uh format that we use the format exactly that we used um and then uh, Kane came out on CBS, and then FX came out with Weeds, and you name it. And then Queen of the South. It's Queen of the South. And then we got Queen of the South. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Narcos, which, which I don't know if I've already mentioned this, but, you know, my wife hated you in that. Because, she hated me, yes. Yeah, she hated me, yeah. yeah I always got, you know, I hate to love you. I don't know why. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know. Isn't that I funny? Because, like, sometimes, don't you, don't you, have you ever had this where, you know, people will call you and think you're the character that they've seen. You know, they kind of, they're expecting oh, yeah. that character to be oh, yeah. you, and you're like, no, as, as somebody I play, you know. A lot of my friends don't even want my, they, you know, the, a lot of my friends' wives don't even want to meet me. They're like, they're like, oh, my God, like, I don't want to meet that guy. He scares me, you know. And it's like, <laughs> well, I mean, like, okay. I mean, you know, I, I, all I could do is uh, text my friends, like, the pictures of me and my family and, you know, uh, uh, go go see my go see what I'm doing currently outside of what I do in Queen of the South, and you kind of get that that's really just an act. It really is. so. I, I mean, know. my efforts in the world are, are are much different from that character. So well, it, was it a is. Good I job. mean, like yeah. what you what you are. I mean, I you know I talk, I talk about you know we've met so many times apart from doing you know right. um, uh, Dead Men Can Dance. We've we've right. met each other numerous times at. Uh, 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 poker tournaments, events, poker places, tournaments, charity events. You come yep. to the peace fund, pay, uh, you know. And so I know you from a different point of view, but I guess people I just watch it. You know, they I think know. you're that person. You know, I right? know it's crazy, man. And you know that was a very interesting thing because um, when that happened, I kind of it kind of coincided with a tragedy that happened with my family. So um, I, I was I was very blessed to be in that project because I was able to use a lot of the the uh the pains that I was going through in in at that time my dad had passed away at the, that very okay. year and and uh I was able to to just channel that energy in a positive way through the character I was playing so I you know obviously you never judge a character you justify him and you know I justified my character through the, some of the pains I was going through and and some of the forgiveness that I had to go through uh in order to um to to realize that character that I was playing take responsibility for that. So it was actually a very timely thing. Um, it helped me. It helped me in my, you know, in my recovery, and it helped me, you know, spiritually. And and yes, it, it was a dark character, but you know, I was in a dark place, you know. Um, and it helped me just kind of like channel all that and get rid of it and leave it there on the screen and go home and give love to my family. <laughs> Do you think that? Um... I mean, because sometimes I think this happens, you know, that you you kind of put out there, you know, this is the energy I have out and stuff comes back to you that is reflection, a reflection of that mm-hmm. sort of mindset you have. Maybe that's mm-hmm. something that was supposed to happen for you. Yeah, yeah, I really believe that. I feel, you know, everything is interconnected. The universe is connected. I'm a very spiritual person. I'm not a very religious person, but I'm a very spiritual person, you know, and I believe in God and I, I believe in, in the stars and the universe and how it all coincides. So, you know, timely things do happen. I mean, uh, a lot of time to give you an example, if I'm, if I decide to just, you know, things aren't kind of cooking like they are right now in Corona time, right? I mean, that's where we are right corona now. Corona time. So yeah, Corona time. So like, it right, has right a totally here. different meaning now, doesn't oh, it? Oh my God. It's before, not even about the drink. Corona time, we've got to have a beer. But right now, I can have a beer. I know, I know. And so like right now, I just, I'm creating, I'm writing, you know, and I've got this really great project that I that I that I've been cooking up and researching for a year now, and I'm finally putting it to paper, pen to paper, you know, or rather, you know, keyboard to paper, right? You know, right. on my final draft. Um, but uh, you know that, and I'm helping my wife with her projects and stuff, and you know, I feel like you know the the universe conspires when you when you just keep creating, and and sometimes even like I'll pick up a play and I'll. I'll work on a subject that's dear to me and I'll, I'll just do a scene, you know, and I'll just keep it, you know, keep going. So, you know, never let, you know, never let anything dictate my creativity. Right. You know, so, right. 
Right. So sometimes I found my, I found myself on, on a number of times over the years when I do that, um, I'm suddenly asked to play that very character I was researching or doing something. You know, I'm, 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 matter of fact, I was uh, the very script I'm talking about. I started writing almost a year ago, and I'm halfway through it. But but uh, but because I was dealing with the subject matter that it's in the script, and I put it out there in the universe that that's what I'm thinking about. That's what I'm putting my heart in. I got two jobs dealing with the same subject matter. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> what about what about you? You did a play called Co- uh, Cocaine Cowboys, didn't you? Cocaine, Cocaine. Cowboys, yeah. Cocaine. That's and that's insane because that play deals with um, Griselda Blanco, who basically a lot of these shows are based on. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of these shows. There's a there's actually a novella that that is that is based on her character. They don't call her Griselda, but you know, there's there's there now. Jennifer Lopez is doing a movie about Griselda Blanco. There's a lot of people wanting to be in the business of Griselda Blanco. Matter of fact, um, uh, Michael Douglas' wife, um, uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones, did a movie about Griselda Blanco. You know, um, and and so so here I am doing a play, and then researching it, I go deep, 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 and I find out the character that I'm playing was the lead role. He's the he, he's the, the the story is based through his journal that he he's the one who actually. Uh, uh, ratted out on on Griselda Blanco, and she, you know, she ended up going to jail for some time before she was uh, before she was murdered uh, back in her hometown in in, in, uh, in Medellin, Colombia. So uh, it's funny, it always ends up like that, doesn't it? Doesn't yeah. matter. I mean, you, you've yeah. got to know that when you're in that business, you're gonna it's not gonna end up well for you. No, no. She had, and she was oh. like, you know, she had lost a son by that point. You know, she had. She, you know, and it was it was really hard for her, you know, uh, thinking that she could escape the whole thing, you know, and uh, and then they they caught up with her the same way that she was killing people in Miami. They got her, and it was a sad. Day. It was just, it was just it was crazy because you know obviously she's beloved by the community, the poor people, just like Pablo Escobar. You know, she gave a lot, you know, back. You know, he gave a lot back, but you know the government weren't having them. You know, so yeah. and and other cartel, you know other cartel uh, um, uh, enemies. So, you right, know, yeah. I'm doing this play in Miami, coincidentally, wild, wild thing, man. The night before opening night, I got a phone call from the guy that I'm playing in the jail, bro. In, no, in, really? Yes, I get the lawyer would happen to be in the audience during previews, bro. And and he's like, dude, you're doing an amazing job without having ever having met him. I know you haven't because no one can talk to him. But I can I can get you on the phone with him if you want. I'm like, what? I was like, dude. So let's how did that phone call go? My God, can you imagine? I mean, like you're talking to the guy. Who, first of all, he's he's you know in jail for. Uh, I mean, he, he's got he's got a, a big a, a big kill list. Okay, I mean, the guy has taken out a lot of people. He was a, he was a hitman, pretty uh-huh. much, you know. And and he worked right. He was he was Griselda Blanco's right hand man. So he's in jail for like serving like six life sentences, you know. I mean, the guy probably will never come out of jail, right? So, so he he is a very char- a very uh, charismatic person, you know. And he he believes that, you know. I found the innocence in him in the way that he was forced to come to America when he was twelve years old, uh, when he was asked to move here uh, to see his father, who had just left his family and abandoned his whole family in Colombia. So he came, you know, with nothing, and and he didn't want to be with his dad, you know. And then he got in the wrong, in the wrong. He got he got with the wrong people, and and that's how it all started. Back in the '80s, that was mm. an insane time to be a, 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 an immigrant, you know, from from any country that you know uh, uh, specifically has a, a big influence in the drug cartels. Right. So um, he fell into the wrong space and. And you know, very talented, you know, young man, and he ended up using his talents, you know, in, in in the wrong way. So you know, he's in jail, and I'm talking to him, and and it's the funniest thing we're talking, and all of a sudden he goes, wait, 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 we got we got to stop. I'm like, okay. So he goes, about thirty seconds later, all right. So where were we at? And it basically was the security guard was was that was walking by his pen, his cell, and he's he's actually talking on a, a, a burner cell phone in in, in solitary <laughs> confinement, dude. 
<laughs> oh my I lord! I was like, oh my you, god! You've had you've had some some interesting stuff throughout throughout your career. What 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 do you say is your favorite? What was I mean, you've done all these. A lot. You did Kingpin. You done Queen of the South. You did Colum- Cocaine Cowboys. A lot of kind of drug um, cartel related stuff. What what's the, yeah. what's your favorite one that you've ever done? For my anyway? favorite. Well, I gotta say, I mean, you know. Uh, most recently, Queen of the South was my, my a lot of fun to do, you know. Yeah, I can um, see cause that. I got because you know you and me both we love we love we love action, right? So we yeah. get to like run around and pretend, you know, to be cowboys and whatnot. And that was that was that was definitely a lot of fun. Kingpin, Queen of the South, Miss Saigon on Broadway, and this last play I did, uh, uh, the, um, the Cocaine Cowboys. All those right up there, you know, as some of my favorite experiences in in, in cinema and theater. And and I you know that's that's pretty much it you know. Well, well um, before before I leave you, um, I've got to ask you one more thing. Mm. I saw that at some point you were mistaken for a valet driver. Is that right? That is correct. <laughs> that was. That Go on, was, I want to hear this. I want to hear this. Here's the thing. Okay, so in Los Angeles, um, you know, you would think that people are more open to diversity and. You know, uh, it, it, kind of like New York or whatnot, but there's still some people that come from an older school of thinking, where you know, if if you're not white, you're doing something else, you know, or right. you know, or that you're not you're not at their level. So, I mean, I, I this happened to me three times in the, in that. No, so really. Far. And the funniest way, I'll try to break it down for you as quickly as possible. First time coming out of a restaurant, I'm in a suit, you know, minding my own business, and the guy pulls up the car. And he hands me the keys. <laughs> I'm like, um, <laughs> thanks. We just sorry. driven off. Yeah, yeah. I could have <laughs> driven off his car and left it in front of a fire hydrant. I could have totally done that, but I, I didn't. I was like, sorry, so I don't work here. I was just a gentleman about it. I didn't, you know, really like, you know, get into it, you know. And then a couple of years later, I was uh, coming out of the gym with a tank top and shorts and sweating from Tai Bo when we Taibo was around in the Sherman Oaks uh-huh, yeah. and, and I'm going into the parking lot and this woman hands me her keys and I'm like, Oh man, look at me. Do I look like I'm ready to get into your car? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, 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 I'm sorry. And then somebody came up right behind me and goes, do you know who you just handed your keys to? You just handed your keys to Kingpin. What are you thinking, girl? <laughs> <laughs> See, oh, that's what yeah. happens. People would recognize you, know, you. And she was so embarrassed. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't. I mean, it was funny how how you could see this white woman go flush red, you know, when when she was embarrassed, embarrassed that way. <laughs> and and finally, the very last way, I was coming out of an audition, and I uh, and I was feeling great, and I felt like I nailed the part. Matter of fact, I did get the part. It was a show called Thief that I ended up doing with Andre Brower, uh-huh. and I came out with this suit, and this guy pulled up in a Mercedes. Uh, you know, and I'm ready to get my car, and I'm standing there waiting for my car, and he pulls up, and he's like, here you go. I'm like, three is a charm. I should just take this freaking Mercedes and just drop it off in the middle of nowhere. But <laughs> <laughs> You'd have, you have like, to go back to your car, though, at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I was like, you know, I believe in God. I believe in the universe. I believe in karma. I ain't going gonna, gonna to mess with people, even though they're trying to mess with me. You know, it's just ignorance. <laughs> Well, listen, yeah, um, you know, you've, you've done a, a bunch of different things. And, and obviously, you know, I actually wanted to ask you one more thing, which was, um, you know, how do you feel when you can't do action? It's something you want to do and you can't, you, you can't do it. You're like, oh, gosh, I wish I was doing that. And you see other people doing it. Is that? Kind of oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Oh. I'm like, oh, I just oh. have to, I've, literally, I have to walk away, go back to my trailer and focus on what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> man, if I could only do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've felt that before, for sure. Yeah, because, you know, like, like now, nah, I, I don't know how I'll feel in 40 years, but I know right now, since I'm still, I feel like I'm in my prime. I mean, I'm 49, but I feel 39, you know, because uh, uh, of the way that we, you know, work out and take care that's, of ourselves. That's part of it now, isn't it? Oh, it's yeah. all about the workout. It's all about yeah, the man. Yeah, man. You know, how well, listen, you, I'll let, how I'll care let care you get back to your family because I know Perfect. you've got your, 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 your six-year-old there and yeah, yeah. and I've got my baby, too. It's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. Corona time. It's Corona um, time. We've got to handle our business. Exactly. <laughs> corona time, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'll... Um, Thanks for uh, joining us today, and um, I know you're going to do some other great stuff. So uh, you, I look forward you too, to man. hearing I can't all wait. about. I can't wait for you and I to get back together in front of the camera. Too, yeah, that'd be kind of fun. I mean, it's been oh, it's only 1998. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, I was three years. Exactly, exactly. You know, we got to do something, man. I, I love you, bro. All right. Okay, I'll, right, I'll God bless. And God bless. Thanks. Hey everyone, it's Ethan with Combat Radio and Brigade Radio 1. By now, you know about Adrian Paul's sword experience, right? The epic adventures, the retreats in exotic places, the staging from movies, the sword fighting, etc. Epic, right? You should be a part of that. But if you're not, now there's something even better. One, the Hollywood experience. Adrian's new podcast featuring action stars, showrunners, all things action. Free on all platforms, including Brigade Radio 1, a podcast you need to listen to. In addition to that... Now, you can go to patreon.com slash swordxp, and you can become a patron of the Sword Experience. Get all kinds of special, free classes, tips, one-on-one training, everything you possibly need. Go to patreon.com slash swordxp, sign up today, find the Hollywood Experience on Brigade Radio 1 and other major platforms, and be a part of the action. Thanks, Yancy, yeah, for that. Um, <laughs> he's such a nice guy. I mean, I've met him so many times Sounds since. Sounds like a nice guy. Yeah, no, he is. He's, he's like, um, you know, I meet him at uh, poker tournaments a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. We've, we, he's come to many of the the Peace Fund radio, uh, sorry, Peace Fund poker tournaments that we've had. Uh, I've met him at other poker tournaments. He's always got a smile on his face. He's yeah. always doing things for other people. Yeah. He's got a lovely wife, a couple of great kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you heard in the background, you heard the kids <laughs> in the background in the first <laughs> of part course, of it. Yes. Um, but you know, m- lot many of you w- won't know is that this interview was actually done twice because <laughs> the first time I lost the first part of the recording. Now I wouldn't necessarily normally ask somebody again, going, "Listen, I lost the interview. Can you go do- go and do the other part?" Because somehow it didn't record, so I got about fifteen minutes from the first part, and then the second part <laughs> we just got recently. So uh, thanks, y- Yancy, for uh, doing that again. So you're because, saying technology uh, isn't perfect. I'm sure. No, not always. Yeah. <laughs> not always. But did, did you see Queen of the South? Uh, no, unfortunately, did not see Queen oh, of the South. Don't let just, I, I, hear me say that. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, I saw I liked it. I liked mm-hmm. it. I thought I thought uh, it was really good. Up, I think, you know, what happens is with a, with, a, with a series is that sometimes it gets to be a little repetitive. There's certain things in it mm-hmm. that I find a little bit over, over the top. Um, you know, I really like the series, mm-hmm. uh, but some things I'm like, okay, they've done that one before, and how much trouble can she get into this this week? Right. Um, you know, but you wouldn't have a series if you didn't have some of that. So, right, exactly. No, you have to have but, something that people can come back to and, you know, be comfortable yeah. with, but still go out there. So, yes, yeah. So, yeah. No, but it's a, it's a good series. I mean... Uh, uh, Yancey, I called him Yancey at one point. <laughs> he said, I was called that when I was younger, but not anymore. Um, you know, but uh, General Cortez, he played, was a really nasty piece of work. You just, I was like, oh my God, that's Yancey. My wife, seriously, she, Alexandra said to me, she said, I don't like him. I said, no, he's a really nice guy. He really is. And she goes, no, I don't like him. I said, no, it's just a character he's playing. So those of you who remember... They're just characters. That's the They're thing. Just characters we're, we're playing. Joffrey on Game of Thrones. You can't be mad at that actor just because he played that <laughs> guy really well. He's a kid. You can't be mad at him. Oh, I was mad at him. I oh, know, I hated him. I, I was like, "Yeah, get him, get him, yeah, yeah, get him." No, yeah, no, I hear you. That's. I mean, it's the it's it's the same thing with a lot of villains like Loki in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You get you hate him, but you can't help but love him. But you got to remember, Tom Hiddleston's not a bad guy. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, actually, Tom Hiddleston's a great actor. I mm-hmm. think he's uh, he's really um, done a lot, done done very well for himself. Broadway trained. Funny. He's on the stage a lot too. So, well, that's also yeah. where Yancey came from. Mm-hmm. You know, his stage uh, career was you know what kind of kicked him off. And he, I think, recently went back to do another stage oh, uh, really? stage play. Okay, um, it was Cocaine uh, Cocaine Cowboys. Got it. Okay, uh, I saw that, that uh, he also did. Um, and I think that does keep an actor, you know, viable in a sense. Mm-hmm. Keeps you because it's it's very different acting on stage than it is acting in a film. Because on stage you have to really put the entire process together. Of course. Whereas on film you're jumping from one scene to the next, mm-hmm. and you know you're not necessarily doing it in order. Right. So 
you know, it's it's a bit harder to to control in a sense. Well, I think, on stage, because... it's, on stage, there is no take two. Like right, exactly. The, the yeah. performance you give is the performance that the audience is going to get. Yeah, but then the funny thing is when you're doing stage, your audience can react very differently one night to the next, even mm-hmm. though you're doing exactly the same thing. So yes. what some people find funny or what some people find sad, mm-hmm. yeah, usually, I, I remember doing Bouncers off Broadway years mm-hmm. ago, and you know it was a, a great uh, uh, piece that we I enjoyed doing it very much. And, and they had, we had we were doing, I think, six nights, six days a week, six, two, 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 six or seven uh, performances a week. Right. And uh, always on a Tuesday night. It was always a Tuesday night. <laughs> we would always have laughs at certain points. Weird. And we get to, yeah, and the weird thing was we got to this particular point uh-huh. and we would get nothing. And we'd get nothing the next time. Huh. But the f- weird thing was those we got standing ovations on those nights. Huh. So I was like, wait a minute, you didn't laugh, but you got <laughs> standing up. I just didn't get it. I mean, so so what an audience reacts to sometimes is very, very different. Right, what do you people want? Like, I'm giving you what I'm giving everybody else. That's so funny. Yeah, but well, they, they get, you know, obviously they got it perhaps better, more than the other people that found it funny. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was, you know, I don't know whether we were, t- I don't know. I have no idea. Right. I have no idea. But Who knows? You know, but I think it does uh, keep an actor on his toes when he has to, uh, to do... Um, uh, stage work because yes. it does I find that much like ballet and dance it kind of um, has a it's, structure to it yes no definitely and it's great that you can bring like skills that you learned in your younger years into your acting careers because you never know when a role is going to call for a, a dancer or an adept swimmer or a drummer or something like that like, or a sword fighter or a sword fighter so or yes, a sword fighter exactly yes uh, what, about, what about you David are you ever going to act <sighs> I can try. There's a reason why I brought up swimmer was because I've been doing. I swam for nine years and all growing up. Oh, so did you? I did. Yes. So I was. Uh, I you know if you looked at my stomach a little bit, you wouldn't guess it, but uh, I, I, I was I was once athletic athletic and fit. So, uh, but what that's what that's what happens. Mm-hmm. As you know, and we we start out in our twenties, in our eighteens mm-hmm. and twenties, and we've got lots of activity, and mm-hmm. then we get into office work and different things right. and you, you got to go eat things that oh that pie was good oh that and all of a sudden you suddenly find that you, you're not moving as from? easily <laughs> and the, which is what everybody's been saying on the patreon stuff is like mm-hmm. you know they put on a few what a uh, few pounds here and then they're not moving as well so um yes thank you for for, for some of the comments we got back regarding mm-hmm. you know how your progress has been yes yeah yeah, yeah. one thing before we go uh or about even before we go Yancey was also in Live Free Die Hard, and I want to bring this up. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes. Because um, I want to know when the last time, Adrian, you saw Die Hard was. Is that an <laughs> annual tradition for you like it is for me? No, it's okay. not. No, yeah. no, no, it's not. I mean, I saw the first one. I love the first one. Yeah. Did you like the first one? Uh, I love the first one. You love the first one? Yes, I do. It's oh, one fuck? of my favorite movies. Uh, and oh, okay. I want to ask, when was the last time you saw it? Oh gosh, uh, a while ago. I'm not. I'm not somebody to keep rehashing a film. Uh, got I, it. I watch it maybe once or twice. Okay. There's a couple of films I watch more than once, twice. Mm-hmm. Very, very few. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm moving on to the next. Are it's you kind of like okay? I've seen it. All yeah. right. Are you aware of the argument of is it a Christmas movie or not? <laughs> no, I see because I know it comes around at Christmas, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. it, it it's a <laughs> movie that takes place on Christmas Eve, and there's the huge argument online of is Die Hard a Christmas movie, and so that's kind of what, what I wanted to ask you. What well, do you, what well, do you think? okay. I would, I would say, you know, Christmas movies are supposed to make you feel good, <laughs> you know, and it kind of is and kind of isn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm kind of in between the two for that one. I okay, think. yeah, okay. It's one where. What, you, what do you think? I what think, do you think? I think you can watch it on Christmas. It's it, it it's a movie that happens to take place on Christmas. I don't think it is a direct Christmas movie, but you know, if you watch it on Christmas, I'm not going to hold it against you. Yeah, I think you know the whole point about it being Christmas is is advertising. I mean, look at what Christmas <laughs> has become. Yes. It's supposed to be, you know, Christmas is supposed to be the day of giving and prayer and you know, giving thanks and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And that's become about shopping. Yes, you know. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, the same thing with the movies. You know, oh, it's a Christmas movie. There's only a Christmas movie because it's been touted as a Christmas mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, you know, I think you can watch Die Hard whenever you want to watch right. it, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it came out in the summer of 1988 or something like that, so it didn't come out at <laughs> Christmas time. So, so yeah. somebody had the great yes. idea to put it on at Christmas and go, "Oh, it's a Christmas movie." And, yes, it's and then definitely three mo- a Christmas movie. <laughs> yes, and then three movies later, Yancey Arias gets a job. Gets a job because of it. 
Yeah, I mean, but uh, you know, obviously, he, you know, talked about how fun that was. But I mean, he's got he's got Bosch coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got LA Finest coming yep. up. Uh, he's got a lot of stuff um, that he's going to be working on. And, yes. Uh, you know, after he did 21 episodes on Queen of the South, which mm-hmm. is pretty good. I mean, it's a solid run on that show. Yeah, solid run, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, Yancey's been working for many years, and mm-hmm. I think he's going to continue. He's a great... No- See, this is the other thing is, I think a lot of the time, this industry's changed so much because you can't... You, you can get away with being a bit of a dick, basically, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're a huge, huge star. Right. If you're a medium star, people are like... and But even even then, even then, people want to f- watch you fail. Right. So you got to be oh, careful because yeah. you're not always going to be at the top. It never happens like that. So sometimes you can actually be out there and you can be the nice guy and mm-hmm. getting work after work after work because people want to keep working with you. Right. And you know they know what they're going to get. So if, if that's the case, I think that's really... Why Yancey works a lot because mm-hmm. he he's a good actor and he's a nice guy as well. Yeah. So anyone listening to this podcast, if you want to get into acting, be nice. Right, exactly. Be nice. <laughs> you never know. All right, well, who could be working I think, with you? I think. So go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go on. No, I'm going to shut you up, David. Shut, David. Stop. Stop talking. Sorry. Stop talking. God, you got to. I can't believe you. He wants to spoil everything for you. I know. I know. Uh, no, I mean. Um, <laughs> We're we're about at the end. We, uh, we've uh, we've brought you all of uh, Yancey's uh, uh, information. Next week we've got Roger Cross for you. Roger Cross. Um, yeah, Roger. Uh, I worked with Roger on Highlander mm-hmm. uh, way back, many many moons ago. Uh, he also has done a numerous amount of uh, stuff on TV. Yes. Uh, you, you can look him up next week, um, and uh, he again brought us. Too. Yeah, he, 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 Roger actually brought us. Uh, those of you that might see the um, the, um, the Zoom Caribbean. call that we did, he had a background of the of the Caribbean behind him. So you know, we had a Vancouver Caribbean discussion when uh, when I talked with him. <laughs> but anyway, um, thanks for keep watching up. Thanks for uh, Patreon. What, uh, look out for us on Patreon. There are different levels you can actually sign up for. We're um, trying to bring you as much as possible uh, in this time, and um, I hope you enjoy. It. I hope you uh, keep fit. Watch the. Uh, lifestyle essentials because that brings you all things of nutrients and stretches and workout routines and all that different stuff that hopefully will keep you healthy and wealthy and wise so this is adrian paul and david bethke and we'll see you on the next sword experience signing off